Welcome to this week's Birth and Baby Talk. I'm Liam Palmerston from Hamilton Family Doulas, and my lovely guest is... Hi, I'm from Ottawa Family Doulas. And, um, or Family Doulas of Ottawa? Sorry, family, you know what it is, is that it's because Toronto, it's Toronto Family Doulas, Hamilton Family Doulas, and for some reason when I get on this show, I mess up the name of my company. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's funny. It's fine. You'll I be able to find sometimes. I always like pause for a second and go, that's right. The names are swapped slightly. Slightly different, yeah. But um, we are two of a four person team that runs three agencies, uh, doula agencies here in Ontario. And every week we bring you this little web show where we talk about stuff that we really hope is going to improve your pregnancy, your birth, and your postpartum experience. Yeah. Um, as always, if you have any ideas of topics you want to learn about, let us know. Leave them in the comments here or on YouTube, and we will get them into a future show. Uh, we appreciate your feedback, and uh, you know we make this show for you, so. Uh, we are looking forward to your continued ideas. Yeah. Uh, and this week, we are talking about a pretty serious topic, but a very important one that doesn't get as much attention as its cousin topic, which is postpartum mood disorders. We're talking about mood disorders in pregnancy. Yeah. So um, I thought that this was a really good topic. I thought <laughs> January seemed like a good month to talk about it. Um, and yeah, you're absolutely right. So with postpartum depression um, and everything that goes along with that, there's a lot of, um, it's getting a lot of kind of airtime right now, which is awesome. And so we should talk about it. There was a big stigma with postpartum depression for many, many, many years. Um, and as a society, we've kind of opened the floodgates. We talk a lot about postpartum depression. It's not as taboo as it once was. You can get a lot of help with it. Um, and everybody knows what you're talking about when you talk about postpartum depression or psychosis or baby blues, anything like that. Everyone is like aware of that. And there's a better understanding. Um, yeah. And a little bit more openness about that topic. Mm. Um, but what I want to talk about is pregnancy during or sorry, depression during pregnancy um, or perinatal depression is what some some terms for it. And it often surprises people, especially when it's um, a wanted pregnancy. So let's say you have someone who is actively trying to have a baby, went through all the things to have a baby, um, they get pregnant, it's supposed to be the most joyous occasion in their life, and all of a sudden they're saddled with these kind of dark feelings, right? And it's that is a really, really hard thing to come to terms with. And as a doula, it's something that I've only encountered like once or twice in the 13 plus years that I've been practicing as a birth doula. Um, so I've spent a little bit of time doing some research, kind of like learning a little bit more about it, what the signs are and kind of like how to help my clients with this form of depression. Um, and the statistics are basically like 10 to 20% of women will um, experience some form of depression during pregnancy. And not just like a, a mood swing, we're gonna talk a little bit about what that looks like, but an actual depression during pregnancy and kind of what to do with that as well. So the thing about depression during pregnancy is it can really mirror the same um, feelings of pregnant, or sorry, the same symptoms <laughs> of being pregnant. So. Um, if you talk about like fatigue, um, you know, changes in appetite, trouble sleeping, that kind of thing. I do have some notes, which is why I'm looking. <laughs> uh, exhaustion, <laughs> emotional changes, that kind of stuff. Those are all really normal pregnancy symptoms. Yeah. Um, so what we want to talk about is having that at a really heightened level. So when we talk about fatigue, when we talk about, sorry, um, like trouble sleeping, for example, we're not talking about getting up every like three hours to have a pee which is what pregnant women do, yes. right? Um, especially into the third trimester, there's lots of other issues, you can't get comfortable, sometimes you have trouble breathing, things like that, so things like that are waking you up. Depression during pregnancy is like the anxiety waking you up, mm -hmm. and the fears and kind of like the dark thoughts that are going with that. Um, changes in appetite, 
Um, also, it's not necessarily like aversions to food or morning sickness. It's just not wanting to eat or maybe eating excessively. So there's lots of those kind of things. So we're talking about it being like a little bit more heightened. Yeah. Um, and so when we, also when we talk to our clients about stuff like this, especially in postpartum depression, um, we talk about like the highs and lows and the fluidity of our emotions and what we always tell everyone to look for, especially the people closest to the pregnant person. So that would be usually the partner if there is one is looking for like the lows not coming back up. Yeah. Right. It's OK when you're pregnant to have like like there's lots of hormones going through your body. Lots is happening. It's OK to be like a little sad or cry at like, you know, I don't know, a car commercial or something like that. Like all that stuff's really normal. But it's when you hit those really major lows and you don't come out of them. And that's when we really um, want everyone to pay a lot of attention as well. Um, and sometimes pregnancy kind of like exasperates these things. So um, if we think about changes in your body, for example, so if we think about the way your body changes when you're pregnant, um, you know, there's, a, there's often like weight gain, which we want to see in a healthy pregnancy, we want to see weight gain, but that can be really hard for a lot of people. Um, and not necessarily, sometimes it's for like, sometimes that's more difficult for people who have suffered from like eating disorders and things like that prior to pregnancy. But also sometimes it just comes out of like nowhere. Sometimes you don't have a history of depression. You never thought that you would be susceptible to it. And, you know, you become pregnant and all of a sudden the depression really hits you. Yeah. So it can be a really, really hard thing. And nobody really understands it. Like people will often, um, you know, like, why are you sad? And this is what you wanted. And how can you not be happy? You're going to have a baby. Um, and there's also a lot of things that will trigger the depression to get a little bit more intense at certain times. So especially as we get further into the pregnancy, um, things like baby showers or something mm -hmm. really practical, like buying a crib mm -hmm. where someone would say to you, like, did you get the crib yet? And all of a sudden you're just like flooded with these overwhelming feelings um, because you may not be ready to buy the crib. Because yeah. Yeah, I'm really familiar with this particularly because I, I went through a form of okay. first and it's it's not just that you're like, oh, shit, like, I think I forgot stuff. It's, no. oh, my God, I'm not going to be able to safely take care of my baby because I'm missing a box of diapers. Right. And and that is an indictment on me as a, a responsible person and parent. Like it's a, it's a deep dive into a dark, dark well. Yeah, um, absolutely. Like freak out. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it can be, yeah, it can that, and it is, it's exactly what you said. It can, it's not only the act of buying the crib, it, it kind of like snowballs all these other emotions. Like, Oh my God, will my baby be sleeping? Oh, like safely. Am I going to be a good parent? How will I do this? All of those things come together. And for some people, it's it's not even anything. It's not even something they can really articulate. They're just like, I don't feel like this is what I necessarily wanted, even though I tried really hard to do this. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Um, so the other thing, too, that I wanted to talk about is, yeah, the fact that it can really affect, like, everyone and anyone. So there's some people who, you know, maybe the journey to getting pregnant wasn't exactly what they thought it was going to be. Maybe um, the pregnancy wasn't planned. Like, there's lots and lots of um, reasons you might just feel a little bit differently about the pregnancy. But, yeah, it can come out of um, left field for sure. Yeah. yeah. But, like, the hormonal imbalance part... Mm -hmm. so a portion of the entire society, right? Like and this, this doesn't necessarily apply just to people who are getting pregnant or have just had babies. Like, no, yeah, one, you have like a kind of almost like a 50 50 chance of like losing the hormonal lottery at some time, your hormones can just start getting wonky yeah. results in mood changes. Yeah. Um, so there's that, but then there's also something we often talk about with regards to postpartum depression with our clients is that the gap between desire and expectation, the wider that gap is, 
the easier it is to fall into mood disorders because that yeah. like in that gap is where mood disorders often lie for people. So yeah, yeah you have an incredibly hard journey to get pregnant. You, you know, like you already have missed the boat on the whole, like getting pregnant is joyful and a joyful yeah. experience. Cause maybe it's not, maybe it yeah. involves three years of hormone therapy and uh, four implantations and you know like a, or like or it is and right yeah exactly yeah. All kinds of stuff so yeah. so there can be lots of stuff that goes with that um and so kind of like oh and the other one too is that sometimes with um depression during pregnancy you can feel really not connected to the baby as well which is something that is really, really difficult. It's like this like foreign thing that's kind of growing in your body and everybody talks about, it's kind of like when we talk about the instant bonding with mother and baby during postpartum depression, like when we talk about postpartum depression. And the reality is not everyone feels that. Yeah. Not, everyone has that aha moment where they're like, yeah, the baby was born and we were instantly connected and it changed everything. Like that doesn't always happen. And it probably happens less than people think it does. So often when we get pregnant, it's not instant either. There's a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of like coming to terms with your body and kind of like what's happening in your body too. Um, so, oh, sorry. Position, though, I, well, I do want to point out though that like the idea of this, this um, glowing motherhood experience, this like yeah. pregnant feeling like so blessed and just like a, the beautiful, deep spiritual experience, like that is a construction in itself. Some people sure. genuinely do feel that and yeah. glory in pregnancy. And some people hate being pregnant. It just doesn't feel yeah. good. It feels very foreign for them. So yeah. we want to make sure that when we talk about that feeling mm -hmm. of disconnection, we're not talking about like, I'm just not that into being pregnant though. No. I'm have I want to start my family and I'm really looking yeah. forward to having my baby. I'm just not into it that much. In yeah. the, the media sort of portrays this like, oh, yeah. I'm angelic and I'm creating life. Yeah. It's like there's really funny memes where they have like the pregnant woman and like she's in this like beautiful photo with like the flowers all around her. And then they have the other woman who's like in their like dirty sweats and like kind of just like lounging on the couch with a bag of chips, which was totally me. Yeah. Like, I I so wanted to have a baby. We tried for a long time to have our first child. And I will tell everybody who wants to listen that I hated being pregnant. I And it wasn't anything to do with the fact that I wasn't in awe of the fact that I was growing a baby. Like I was, and I felt really connected to my baby, but I did not enjoy it. Yeah. I didn't feel good. I was really, really sick. Um, you know, my skin didn't look nice. I didn't feel like my body looked the way it was like supposed to look. Yeah. Um, everything was hard. Everything was swollen. Every <laughs> so, and that's okay. It's okay yeah. to not feel like a glowing, lovely pregnant woman. And it's really lovely when people would say that I, that I was, and I don't know if they were lying or not, but like, thank you, because that probably helped me through. Um, but there is there is a lot to deal with when you're growing a baby and it's okay to not necessarily like the process. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So that disconnection is is not about that so much as feeling like I've been invaded by a, like a parent right. being kind of thing. Right. And yeah. That. And I just. And, and sometimes what we see is like people like kind of in denial about pregnancy. As yeah. Well. Like they don't, they don't want to talk about baby. They don't want to plan oh. for birth. They, they kind of want to like um, push all of that away. And that's the problem. Like yeah. that's, that's the indicator that there's an issue going on. I feel like that's, yeah, that's the that's red flag. Right. You do have to deal with it. You don't have to be in love with it, but you do have to manage the whole experience. Yeah. And I think that I think that's actually a really, really good point. Because when we talk about the people in your lives who see those red flags, that's a huge red flag. That's like if you, it's different if you're like, yeah, like I hate being pregnant, but I'm going to still buy all the things and I want to do this. And, you know, we're going to move ahead on this journey. If you, if your partner is not wanting to talk about the pregnancy, 
not wanting to buy the things you might need for the baby, um, you know, not really keen to go to the caregiver appointments or the ultrasounds or anything like that. Those are those are really big red flags. Yeah. Um, and that's a good segue, because then what do you do? Right. Mm -hmm. well, you're seeing this, the, you know, that your partner going through this and you're having a baby and you know that like there's only one outcome. <laughs> to this, the baby is coming. Yeah. Um, and so the obviously the best thing to do is to talk to your doctor, mm -hmm. right? Um, there are lots of things that can help you right now in terms of depression. Um, obviously therapy is, is a really good one. So there's lots of people you can talk to. Um, and actually we in Ottawa have a few really great places, like good resources, resources for pregnant for depression during pregnancy. Um, that we can definitely post for sure. I think there's somewhere we can post that stuff, right, Leanne? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she's like she's the tech person. <laughs> um, and all the, and there's also medication too. I mean, we're not doctors, but I'm sure there's lots of medication that's appropriate for pregnant people that can take to help with depression. Um, but talk therapy has been proven to be a really good uh, way to kind of get all of that out. Um, you can still do it during COVID. Um, obviously, we just do everything virtually. Talk to your care provider. So talk to your OBGYN, your midwife, your doctor. Um, you know, they also might recommend having a doula because your doula is someone who you can contact any time of the night, right? So for Hamilton and Toronto and Ottawa, we all work the same way. Um, all of our clients have access to us 24 hours a day, regardless of how pregnant you are. So if you're four months pregnant and you're having a really hard night and you want to talk to somebody at four in the morning, that is what your birth doula is for. Yeah. So it's just having somebody has a little bit more knowledge about it, um, can offer you resources, kind of steer you in the right direction. So it's important to have people kind of on your team um, that will help you with that. For sure. Yeah. 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 So, and, and, oh, how about for the pregnant person who's in the middle of this? Um, so that's, yeah, I mean, it, it's often we say like, look for signs when we talk about partners, because often the pregnant person isn't always the one who wants to come forward, right? That's a really hard thing to do. So what I always suggest is we have a lot of, there's a really good one I have. It's the 24-hour um, mental health crisis line in Ottawa. So that's a really good one you can phone or text. So if you just need somewhere to reach out to, but maybe maybe you're not comfortable talking to your partner. Maybe you feel ashamed or isolated and you just don't know where to go. There's, there's quite a few um, crisis lines that you can call as well. Yeah. To kind of talk it through. I've always said to like, I'm a doula, you know, if you want to call me, call Hamilton family doulas and talk to someone immediately to just be like, Hey, yeah, like I, I recognize that you're not feeling great. And here's what, you know, your next step should be here are a few resources, um, you know, and people you should be alerting to this, Yes, you know, cause I think sometimes a lot of people just, I don't know. I, maybe it's the Catholic in me, but <laughs> we're often, and I'm a woman who was, you know, raised Catholic and yeah. uh, we were often told um, like not to make a fuss, you know, like right. so women uh, in our society are, have been up till now, I think we're doing a good job of turning that boat, but um, we've been told that, you know, like it's, don't rock the boat. Don't make a big deal. Like it's not right. about you, it's the baby. So swallow all of that stuff. And but yeah. the thing is, you know, we've always said like, you got to put your own mask on before you can take care of anyone else. Right. So if, you know, mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Um, and I actually didn't understand that reasoning before I was a parent. Whenever I took a flight anywhere, I was like, Jesus, why wouldn't you like save your kid first? And then I was like, yeah. then I became a parent and I was like, right, because then we really learn about self-care. And when you talk about, you know, being a woman and not making like a scene, um, I mean, we're talking like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of us as women being those people and being 
you know, this is what women do. Women like have babies and they are excellent mothers and they take care of these babies and, and everything is fine and, and they will know everything once the baby's born. Mm. And we all know that that's a myth. And now when we talk about being pregnant, it's the same thing. Like, how are we supposed to know what it's like to feel pregnant if we've never been pregnant before? Yeah. How are we supposed to do this, right? Um, and that's why there are a lot of like support groups as well. Um, where you can talk to like not necessarily professionals, but peers. Yeah. Right? And I think that's a really hard thing about living in a pandemic that we've seen, I'm sure you've seen it as well, that we've seen with clients um, over the course of this pandemic. And there's not a lot of like peer support. So yeah, yeah we can get on a Zoom call and we go to virtual um, like postpartum support groups and things like that. But there's something about like just being with a group of parents and really um, kind of unloading how you feel, right? And knowing that those people fully understand that, like they're going to be like, yeah, I get that, especially of the same generation yeah. um, because it's different, right? And I mean, depend. I mean, we all had different parents, but they all came from the same generation and every generation is a little bit different in the way they handle things and the way they kind of express their feelings. Um, and there's a lot to be said for just having like kind of a sounding board. Yeah, and having someone listen to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, for my clients, my rule of thumb is always like, if you're feeling, if you're feeling unhappy more often than you're happy, mm -hmm. that's the first biggest red flag. But even yeah. if you're feeling unhappy, like a third of the time, that's a lot of time to be spending not feeling great. And it's always worth it to reach out to someone. Mm -hmm. You can start with your, your, your main healthcare provider. So you can either go straight into your pregnancy care providers or go into your family practitioner. Yeah. Um, and that's always the first step. There are a number of resources in every major um, urban area and most regional areas set up specifically for perinatal issues. Yeah. So there are uh, peer support groups that are led by professionals. There mm -hmm. are also, and that's, and that's like a nice casual sort of drop in. Yeah. Kind of like that. That. yeah. And, and then there are formal programs and then there are psychotherapists and other types of therapists who specialize yeah. in the, the area of perinatal issues and maternal wellness. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if, if the idea of figuring out how to recognize these things in yourself is an issue that you're particularly interested in, folks, come on back on February 24th, we'll be having... Uh, Cree Lambeck back to talk about how to figure out if you're experiencing perinatal um, mood disorders. Um, so because as we're saying, it's tricky because a lot of these yeah. things mimic the normal experience of pregnancy, the normal experience of postpartum. And as you know, someone who went through that I, you know, it took me a really, really long time to get care in the postpartum period because I thought, mm -hmm. oh, this is supposed to be hard. I'm supposed to be emotionally all over the place. I'm supposed yeah. to be completely like not in complete control of my emotional experience. And uh, I'm fatigued. I'm not eating regularly. I'm not sleeping properly. Because yeah. of course I'm not feeling right mentally, but mm -hmm. there are ways like there, there is a sort of tipping point where, yeah, occasional, like feeling sure. extreme or feeling deeply sad and weird yeah. about all of it is normal. There is a point that that is totally normal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when that starts to become a regular occurrence in your your experience, then yeah. it's time to reach outwards uh, for support. Yeah. And that's really similar to like regular depression, too. Right. Like we talk about depression during pregnancy the same thing right I mean it's okay to have like a really bad day it's okay to like cry at the car commercial it's I mean I my kids are always making fun of me because I cry at everything on TV I don't know. <laughs> it's emotional but it's when you go low and you don't go back and that's always what we say that you that's the real indicator right 
Um, and the only thing I wanted to, the only other thing I wanted to mention is I have talked to different um, pregnant people who have also talked about the fear of their depression affecting the baby. Mm -hmm. So that is a re, and so that adds to your anxiety. That adds um, to kind of the depression as a whole. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not a doctor, but I, there is no correlation between like your like emotions and like your baby not feeling wanted, right? So a lot of like pregnant people are like, I'm so depressed, and or I'm having a really hard time connecting with my baby. Is my baby going to be born and think that they're not loved? And that is just completely false. Yeah. That is not a, a thing. Um, and so I think that adds to it as well, where they, there's a lot of guilt associated with that too. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want, you know, anybody who's feeling like that to know that that's not the case, that, you know, your baby will be loved and um, it will be like, it will be okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you can, again, like I saw this lovely quote once where the woman said like, it's when a baby is born to a parent, there is like glue on the baby and glue on the parent. And if we can, you know, like a, like a good, like a, you know, uh, what's that E6000 glue, like <laughs> a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other, we want to put them together so that they stick. Um, and we can get them together immediately. Uh, but if there's a gap of a few days or, or yeah. so there, they'll still stick. Yeah. Just yeah. Be a little slower getting them to stick. And it's like yeah. that for those parents who are feeling disassociated, it doesn't mean that if you feel that disassociation or you feel that maybe even some feelings of resentment, that's normal. Oh yeah, absolutely. For it's sure. Taboo to say like, I'm resentful of this baby or I'm resentful of my situation. Because those yeah. are real feelings that real people have. Yeah. It's so normal. So, if you're feeling that kind of stuff, just because you're not, you know, like it maybe does affect your bonding in the early days. It doesn't mean you're never going to have a loving, deep, connected relationship with your child and that your child is not going to grow up feeling like they're surrounded by love. It's, that stuff is just going to maybe take a little while to get off. Yeah. Part. yeah and that's totally normal too. And sometimes it, it makes me think of, um, probably a bit of a different example but about babies in the NICU right because we all talk about you know we talk about the importance of skin to skin which absolutely it's really important but those babies in the NICU who don't get that right away or maybe have long periods of time where they can't um come out of the warmer I call it a warmer I know there's a medical term for it <laughs> um those babies are still loved they're still yes. bonded with their parents they still grow up to be like you know they still grow up having loving yeah, like it's 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 okay, right? And I think that we just need more people to kind of reach out and get um, either the peer support they need or the professional help they need if that's if that's kind of like the way it's going. Um, just to just to know that they're not alone and that you know there's lots of other people dealing with the same thing. Absolutely. So, yeah. um, if you are feeling uh, like your pregnancy is just you're, you're not weathering the mental sort of challenges of your pregnancy well, then reach out. You can reach out to us. You can reach out to your partner. You can reach out to your family practitioner. You can reach out to your midwives and obstetricians. All of those people will help direct you to the right places. Um, if you reach out to someone like us, then we can look for those resources in your area. So um, I'm an expert on those kinds of resources here in the general Hamilton region. Megan is an expert on those resources in the Ottawa region. And uh, Megan Grant and Alex Weinberger are experts on those resources in the greater Toronto region. So um, if you're in those areas, we've got that stuff at the tip of our fingers. If you're not in those areas, then we have colleagues we can reach out to to make sure that you can get those resources if you're looking for them. So please do reach out because you have every right to experience as much joy as possible in your life. And uh, and sometimes, you know, there are solutions, potentially medicated solutions, potentially talk therapy. Sometimes it's just 
it's enough to unburden yourself to someone else to help relieve that the pressure of those feelings um, and help you feel better. So please do do that. Absolutely. So thanks for joining us, folks. Um, remember to sign up for our newsletter, which will keep you in the loop on everything that's going on here at Birth and Baby Talk. Um, next week, please come back because Megan Grant from Toronto Family Doulas is going to be talking about developmental milestones and the Wonder Weeks, which is one of my favorite topics. Um, it is like the secret key to understanding your baby's weird fluctuating moods and behavior <laughs> changes over the course of the first year. Uh, so you're not going to want to miss that. Thank you very much, Megan, for joining today. Thank you. And we'll see everyone again soon.